Did you ever wonder how fingerprinting's done? How a pizza's made or how a rainy sky meets a rainbow with the sun? Well, we can show you ways to find the answers for yourself Using stuff right from your shell And with remote control You control the action Stop and go Having fun with my first My first Step-by-step -step Activity videos Welcome to my first cooking video We'll show you how to make all kinds of delicious things to eat there are 10 recipes, and they're all very easy to follow and fun to do. Before we start, here's a quick guide to help you use this video. At the beginning of each recipe, we'll show you all the ingredients you will need. Make a list of all these things so you can gather them together before you start. Use the pause button on your video cassette recorder to give you time to write everything down. Wash your hands and put on an apron before you start cooking. Safety is very important in the kitchen. Be very careful with sharp knives. Wear oven mitts when picking up anything hot or when taking things out of the oven. Whenever you see this oven mitt in the corner of the screen, it means you should ask an adult to help you. Always remember to turn the oven off when you have finished cooking. Let's look at the cooking utensils you will need to follow the recipes in the video. A pastry brush, small bowl, a strainer, mixing bowl, wooden spoon, rolling pin, cutting board, sharp knife, a regular dinner knife, plastic fork, tablespoon and teaspoon, measuring cup, cheese grater, oven mitt, wire cooling rack, 8-inch layer cake pans, small saucepan, muffin pan, baking tray, cookie cutters, skewer, whisk, spatula, and scissors. You will also need some kitchen scales so you can weigh the ingredients. Let's start with a recipe for making different shaped bread rolls and a family of bread bears. These are the things you will need. Two and two-thirds cups of all-purpose flour, three-quarters of a cup of warm water, one tablespoon of vegetable oil, a large pinch of salt, one half envelope of quick-acting dried yeast, some kitchen scissors, a pastry brush, one beaten egg, poppy seeds, sesame seeds, and caraway seeds raisins, and some grated cheese. And this is what you do. First, set the oven to 450 degrees Fahrenheit or 230 degrees centigrade. Put the flour, yeast, and salt into the mixing bowl. Now add the vegetable oil and the water. Mix everything together into a firm dough. If the dough is sticky, add a little more flour. Add a little water if it's too dry. Sprinkle some flour over the counter. And now push your hands into the dough like this. This is called kneading the dough. Do this for five minutes. Now you're ready to shape the dough into rolls. Break the dough into eight pieces. These pieces may look small, but when they're baked, they'll become twice the size. Grease a baking tray with some shortening or vegetable oil. You can make bread rolls into all kinds of different shapes. How about a tortoise? Head? Mark the top.
top of the roll with a knife to make it look like a shell. How about a flower design? First flatten a ball of dough slightly and snip all around the edge of the dough with scissors to make petal shapes. Easy. And here's another idea. Make a small ball of dough. Brush the bottom of it with water, stick it to a larger roll, and use a skewer to make a hole. When you finish shaping the dough into rolls, put them on to a greased baking tray. Then put them in a warm place and leave them to rise for an hour or so. And let's speed up what happens. When the rolls have doubled in size, they're ready to be decorated. Brush the rolls with a beaten egg. This will give the rolls a golden glaze when they're baked. Now you can decorate them with poppy seeds, caraway seeds, and raisins for eyes. Now they're ready to be baked. Bake them for about 15 to 20 minutes. And now, for some magic. If you're not sure when they're ready, tap the underneath of a roll like this. If it sounds hollow, they're done. Put them on a wire rack to cool. And now they're ready for eating. Make some bread rolls yourself using shapes of your own. Here's an idea. Bread bears. You can make these bears using the same recipe as the bread rolls, but use double the ingredients. This is what you need to do. When you have made the dough, break it into balls. One for the body, one for the head. Brush one side of the head with egg and stick it to the bear's body. To make the arms and legs, make little balls of dough and stick them to the body in the same way. Legs, arms, ears, and a nose. Use scissors or a knife to make the bear's claws. Cover the bread bears with a towel and leave them in a warm place to rise until they have doubled in size. This should take about one hour. Now brush the bears with beaten egg to glaze them. You can decorate them with grated cheese, poppy seeds, sesame seeds, Raisins for eyes. Bake the bears in the oven for 20 to 25 minutes. And this is what happens.
So there were a number of different and exciting ways to make bread. Try experimenting with this recipe using shapes of your own. In this next recipe, we'll show you how to make baked potatoes into boats. Don't they look fun? These are the things you will need. Large scrub potatoes, grated cheese, butter, lettuce, cheese slices, mushrooms, carrots, cucumber, black olives, peppers, and this is what you do. Set the oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 200 degrees centigrade. Prick the potatoes with a fork and place them on a greased baking tray. Bake the potatoes for about an hour and 15 minutes. When they're cooked, cut the potatoes in half and scoop them out into a bowl. Now grate some cheese. Add the cheese and some butter to the potatoes and mash them together well. Now spoon the mixture back into the potato skins. And level them off. Put them back into the oven for another 15 minutes. While they're cooking, you can prepare everything you need to decorate them. Right, here are some ideas for making the boats. Starting with a sailing boat. Cut a piece of red pepper for the deck. Use a toothpick for the mast a triangle of cheese for the sail, and an olive for the sailor. Now for a rowing boat. Cut some slices of carrot and cucumber for oars. olives for the crew. There. And now a steamship. Some red pepper for the deck. Carrots. Mushroom stems for smokestacks. Lastly, serve the potatoes on a sea of lettuce and cut some fish shapes out of carrots and cucumbers. <laughs> Don't they look great? Pizzas are always popular. And in this recipe, we'll show you how to make them into pictures. For a party, perhaps. These are the things you will need to make two small pizzas. Three quarters of a cup of self-rising flour. A pinch of salt. Three tablespoons of butter. Some grated cheese. Three to four tablespoons of milk. A rolling pin. A small can of tomatoes. An onion. A tablespoon of tomato paste and some salt and pepper. This is what you do. Set the oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit or 220 degrees centigrade. Chop up the onion and put it into the saucepan. Now add the tomatoes, tomato paste, salt and pepper and stir the mixture together. Cook the mixture over a low heat for about 15 minutes, stirring it from time to time. 
Then turn off the heat and leave it to cool. While the sauce is cooking, you can make the dough. Put the flour, salt, and butter into a mixing bowl. Rub the butter and flour between your fingers and thumbs until the mixture looks like breadcrumbs. Add the grated cheese. milk to the flour mixture. Mix it all together until you have a smooth ball of dough. Separate the dough into two balls. Now sprinkle some flour over the counter and roll each ball of dough into a circular shape about four inches across. Lay the circles of dough onto a greased baking tray. Now spoon on the tomato sauce. Now you can turn the pizzas into pictures. To decorate them you will need some grated cheese, cheese shapes, slices of cooked sausage, sliced mushrooms, sliced peppers, strips of sliced ham, black olives, and canned corn. How about a face? some slices of mushroom for the ears, slices of cheeses for the eyes, and nose, and black olives. some thin slices of green pepper for the whiskers and mouth. A mouse! And here's another idea. A tomato base, grated cheese, olives, slices of cooked sausage, green pepper, and a slice of olive. A clock! Once you have decorated the pizzas, put them in the oven to cook for 15 to 20 minutes. And here's one cooking. Doesn't that look yummy? Be sure to let it cool before you eat it. What time is it? It's pizza time. This one is especially fun to share with your friends. So there are two ideas. Try doing these yourself or experiment with your own ideas for making pizzas into pictures. In this recipe, we'll show you how to make tiny fruit tarts and savory quiches. To start with, you need to make pastry shells. Here are the ingredients. A cup of all-purpose flour, a pinch of salt, one stick or four ounces of butter or margarine, two tablespoons of sugar, three tablespoons of water, some cookie cutters, little tartlet pans. These ingredients will make about 30 small tarts. Set the oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 200 degrees centigrade. Start by mixing the flour, butter, and salt together. Cut the butter up first. Rub the flour and butter together with your fingers until they look like breadcrumbs. For sweet tarts, add sugar to the mixture. Now mix in the water, a little at a time. And 
you should end up with a soft ball of dough that leaves the sides of the bowl clean. Sprinkle some flour onto the counter. And roll out the dough with a rolling pin. Now use a cookie cutter or a cup to cut out the pastry. Lay the circles of pastry over the tins and press them gently over the tartlet pan so that they fit well. Prick the bases of the pastry shells with a fork and then put them into the oven and bake them for 15 minutes until they're golden brown. When they're cooked, let the tins cool a little. Then tip out the pastry shells and put them on a wire rack. We'll fill these tarts with fruit in a few moments. These are the things you will need to make mini quiches. Two thirds of a cup of milk, two eggs, some grated cheese, canned tuna fish, strips of sliced ham, sliced tomatoes, mushrooms, chopped scallions, and sliced leeks. And this is what you do. Start by chopping up the ingredients. Break the eggs into the measuring cup and beat them well. Now pour in the milk and continue mixing. Arrange the fillings in the pastry shells. You can add whatever you want. Cheese, tomatoes, mushrooms, tuna fish, chopped scallions, leeks, slices of ham, Then carefully pour on the egg mixture. And they're ready to go into the oven. Cook them for 20 minutes. Don't they look lovely? And now, here are some mouth-watering fruit tarts for you to make. These are the things you will need. One half cup jam or fruit jelly, canned mandarin orange sections, seedless grapes, pineapple chunks, raspberries. And this is what you do. You need the fruit jelly or jam to make a glaze. Do this by melting them in a small saucepan over a low heat. Brush the insides of the pastry shells, which you made earlier in this video, with the glaze. Wash the fruit, and then arrange it in the pastry shells.
Once you're happy with your design, brush the fruit with glaze, which will set as it cools. And that's all you have to do. And here's a collection of finished tarts. Weren't they easy to do? You can make fruit fools with any fruit soft enough to mash with a fork. Here's a recipe for making strawberry and banana fools. These are the things you will need to make four small fools. One cup of strawberries, two bananas, one cup of yogurt, two tablespoons of sugar, a slice of lemon, some wafer cookies, chocolate chips, candy cherries, seedless grapes, sliced kiwi fruit. And this is what you do. Start by cutting the fruit up and mashing it up with a fork. Once that's done, whisk the yogurt and add it with the sugar to the mashed fruit and stir well. When it's all mixed up, pour the fruit mixture into the serving dishes. And now you can make it into a face. Wafer cookies and chocolate chips for the eyes. A cherry for the nose. A slice of kiwi fruit for the mouth. Wafers for ears. Now there's a funny face. Here's another one. Strawberries for the ears, grapes for eyes, wafer cookies for the nose, and a chocolate chip for the mouth. Whiskers made from kiwi fruit. A cat. You could also make flower patterns out of the fruit. Wouldn't that be fun? Ice cream sundaes are great fun to make. All you need is some ice cream, some sauces, and lots of exciting things to put on top. Make sure you make them quickly, otherwise they'll melt. These are the things you will need. Strawberry, vanilla, and chocolate ice cream, two-thirds of a cup of raspberries, four ounces of dark chocolate, six tablespoons or three ounces of sugar, three tablespoons of water, sliced kiwi and mandarin oranges, wafer cookies, grapes, sliced peaches, mixed nuts, chocolate chips, licorice, chocolate sprinkles, and multicolored sprinkles. Let's start by making raspberry sauce. Wash the raspberries and put them in a strainer over a bowl. Then push the raspberries through the strainer using a wooden spoon. Add the sugar to the mashed up raspberries a little at a time, stirring hard until all the sugar is dissolved. There we go. Now for some chocolate sauce. Break up the chocolate into a bowl. Add three tablespoons of water. Now ask an adult to heat some water in a saucepan and help you place the bowl over the saucepan until the chocolate melts. Stir it until it's smooth. Then turn off the heat. Now watch how you can make an ice cream sundae look like a caterpillar. First, some raspberry sauce. Then some ice cream. some 
grapes for eyes. Licorice for eyebrows. Cherry for the nose. Cookies and chocolate drops for decoration. There, finished. Put it straight into the freezer before it melts. Here's another idea. An ice cream bumblebee. And how about a butterfly? And here's a flower design. Ice cream, peach slices, Sliced kiwi fruit, strawberries, some raspberry sauce, and add a walnut. Try making these yourself, or experiment with your own designs. In this recipe, we will show you how to make and decorate some lovely spice cookies. These are the things you will need. Two cups of plain flour, six tablespoons of butter, an egg, one quarter cup of corn syrup, one half cup of soft brown sugar packed, a teaspoon of baking powder, a tablespoon of cinnamon and a rolling pin. And this is what you do. Start by putting the flour, baking powder, and cinnamon into a strainer over the mixing bowl. Then sift the mixture to make sure there are no lumps. Now add the sugar and mix it into the flour mixture. Cut the butter up into small pieces and add this too. Rub the flour and butter together with your fingers until the mixture looks like breadcrumbs. Break an egg into a cup and beat it with a fork. Now add the corn syrup and mix it with the egg until it's smooth. Make a well in the flour. Pour in the egg mixture. Mix everything together well until you have a big ball of dough. Put the ball of dough into a plastic bag and place it in a fridge for half an hour. This will make it easier to roll out. After half an hour, take the cookie dough out of the fridge. Sprinkle some flour onto the counter. And roll out the dough until it's one quarter of an inch thick. Now you are ready to cut the dough into different shaped cookies. You will need cookie cutters, raisins, almonds, walnuts, cherries, sesame seeds, and a spatula. Use cookie cutters, or you could use a knife to design your own shapes. Now, 
very carefully so the shapes don't break, use a spatula to lift the cookies and place them onto the baking tray. You can decorate the cookies with cherries, raisins, and sesame seeds. A gingerbread man. There's a giraffe. Another funny face. If you want to ice any of the cookies, leave them plain when you cook them. Ask an adult to put the cookies in a preheated oven at 325 degrees Fahrenheit or 170 degrees centigrade. Bake the cookies for 15 to 20 minutes until they're golden brown. When they're cooked, move them onto a wire rack to cool. If you cook the cookies plain, like these, you can decorate them with icing. To do this, you'll need one cup of confectioner sugar, one quarter cup of cocoa powder, a tablespoon of hot water, and for decorations, chocolate sprinkles, multicolored sprinkles, chocolate chips, and chocolate coated candies. Sift one half cup of confectioner sugar into a small bowl. Adding the hot water a little at a time, mixing it into a smooth paste. And there we have plain white icing. And how about chocolate icing? To make chocolate icing, mix one quarter cup of cocoa powder with one half cup of confectioner sugar and make it in the same way as the white icing, mixing in a spoonful of hot water a little at a time. Done. Spoon a little icing onto each cookie with a wet knife, like this. Before the icing sets, you can decorate your cookies with all kinds of things, such as candy-coated chocolates, chocolate sprinkles, cherries, or multicolored sprinkles. Lots of finished cookies. Try a few of these ideas yourself. Here's a recipe for making and decorating a delicious sponge cake, ideal for birthdays and tea parties. To start with, we'll show you how to make the basic sponge cake. These are the things you will need. Three eggs, one and one half sticks or six ounces of butter, three quarter cups of sugar, one and one third cups of all purpose flour, one and one half teaspoons of baking powder. And this is what you do. Set the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 180 degrees centigrade. Rub some butter around the insides of two eight inch layer cake pans. Put the butter and sugar in the mixing bowl. Beat them with the wooden spoon until the mixture is pale and creamy. Beat the eggs in a small bowl and add them to the mixture, stirring them in well until everything is smooth. Now sift the flour and baking powder into the mixture and mix them together well.
The mixture should now be soft and light. Pour half of the cake mixture into each cake pan and level it off. Then place them in the oven for 20 to 25 minutes. Here's one cooking. The cakes are done when they have risen and turned light brown. Turn them out onto a wire rack and leave them to cool. And now to make the icing. You will need six tablespoons of butter, three quarters of a cup of confectioner sugar, one tablespoon of cocoa powder, two tablespoons of milk, candy-coated chocolates, almonds, multicolored sprinkles, chocolate chips. And this is what you do. Put the butter into a mixing bowl and beat it hard with the wooden spoon until it's soft and creamy. Next, sift the icing sugar and cocoa powder into the bowl, a little at a time. Then pour in the milk and keep stirring. When the cakes are cool, spread half the icing onto one of them. Put the other cake on top and spread the rest of the icing over it. for the decoration. Candy coated chocolates, chocolate chips, multicolored sprinkles, more candy coated chocolates, Almonds. And there's a duck. These chocolate truffles are delicious and make ideal presents. They're also quick and easy to make. These are the things you will need. One half cup of confectioner sugar, one quarter cup of cocoa powder, a quarter cup of cream cheese, a quarter cup of chopped nuts, chocolate sprinkles, and paper candy cups. Put the chopped nuts into a mixing bowl. Add the cream cheese, confectioner sugar, and cocoa powder. Mix it all together. 
Now roll the mixture into little balls in the palm of your hand. Then roll it carefully over the chocolate sprinkles. And then put the truffles into the paper candy cups. And that's all there is to it. Here's another quick and easy recipe for making your own sweets. By dipping fruits and nuts into melted chocolate. You could give these away as presents, but they're so good, you have to save a few for yourself. Here are the things you will need. Cherries, strawberries, mandarin orange segments, grapes, walnuts, Brazil nuts, almonds, six ounces of dark chocolate, toothpicks, paper candy cups, waxed paper. And this is what you do. Break the chocolate into a bowl. Ask an adult to heat some water in a saucepan until it begins to bubble. It shouldn't boil too hard. Now place the bowl over the top of the saucepan and stir it until the chocolate is melted. Because it's very hot, carefully place the bowl on a mat or dish towel away from the cooker. Now all you have to do is dip the fruit and nuts halfway into the chocolate. It may help to use a toothpick with some of the fruit. Put the sweets on wax paper to dry. Just look at these chocolate dips. Each one prettier and more delicious than the next. Once they're dry, you can put these finished sweets in paper candy cups. The sweets make terrific presents. Why not put them in a chocolate box that you've made yourself? That brings us to the end of this video. Remember, before you try doing any of these recipes, ask an adult's permission first. And when in the kitchen, think safety. Why not start planning something to cook right away? Did you ever wonder how fingerprinting's done? How a pizza's made or how a rainy sky meets a rainbow with the sun? Well, we can show you ways to find the answers for yourself Using stuff right from your shell And with remote control You control the action Stop and go Having fun with my first My first step-by-step -step Activity videos Discover a whole new world of fun with my first activity video series. Among the many titles you will want to explore are My first cooking video My first science video. My first nature video. And of course, my first activity video. Also, if you'd like to join the Sony Kids Music and Video Fan Club and receive a free newsletter and catalog, please send us your name, address, age, the name of this tape and where you bought it. Write to us at Sony Kids Music and Video, P.O. Box 4450, Mail Drop 514, New York, New York, 
10101.